it is about 8 o'clock in the morning. All of us get rocking and rolling a little bit around 7.30. Sunrise will be at about 9.30, and that's when Alyssa starts school with the girls after breakfast and after we get some natural sunlight in the house here because otherwise we could start the generator but it's not necessary right now at this time of the year so a little day in the life here just showing you what the girls do in the morning before they get dressed and start school and Alyssa and i are gonna sit down for our morning coffee then we'll get started with some chores i guess So filling the wheelbarrow is a chore that I do probably every other day. Pushing this all the way down to Joe's cabin is a bit much in the snow. So he fills the sled and pulls the sled down to his cabin. Get some wood over to the house and then chop some more. All right, so you got to check this out real quick. When Joe and I were kids, we were chopping wood with our brother and our dad with an ax, popping stuff that was super straight grain like this. But now, since we live in the Arctic, these trees don't grow so uniform as they did down in Montana. So it's easy to stack all your firewood when it's all beautiful like this. But if you come around, check out these from a different angle. This is the kind of Sitka spruce that grow here in central Alaska. The grain has a rough time, as you can see. Look at some of the detail in those knots. The growing conditions are harsh up here and it makes for some pretty stout wood, really strong trees, but sometimes the grain makes it miserable to stack. Oh, perfect. No problem. Oh, see, wait, that one looks like an idiot. It doesn't even know what to do with itself. So I usually burn these first. <laughs> Ah, oh, <laughs> the pile's getting smaller. That pile's getting bigger. Yeah, boy. All in a day's work. All right, let's watch. How'd that go? I didn't see. Okay, so I figured it out. It's easier to use this thing when I haul a four gallon bucket. Like I mentioned in that other video, my legs are too short to haul them five gallon buckets up from the lake. The buckets keep whacking into the rock steps and all that. Thought I was gonna break something. So, instead of 10 gallons at a time, I'll have to haul up eight gallons. Today, I am filling our holding tank inside the lodge. It's workout day, it's shower day, Yesterday was laundry day, so Joe did this about, he made like 10 trips from the lake. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these little ice cleats. You know, I know we got some family and friends that are viewing this down in Florida. I don't know if you've ever even seen these things. But they help you when it's all treacherous conditions. There's some ice down there by the lake, so comment down below if you've never seen these things. They strap onto the bottom of your shoes. All right. So now I gotta drop this. All right, so this 
hose goes into the holding tank inside the house. This isn't being used for drinking. It is for showers, dishes, stuff like that. We take a little more care with all the stuff that we drink, but this is just quick and easy. Goes, you know, right through the on-demand water heater and we can take showers, stuff like that. Thankfully, we do not have to do this all winter. That would be very depressing. Once the ice on the lake freezes up real nice and tight, we drive the snowmobiles out onto the lake, put an electric pump into the water. You might have seen the video from last year, and I'm sure we'll make another video this year in a couple, probably a couple weeks when that ice firms up. But in the meantime, this is how we get our water. All right, so I was in here eating lunch with the family. Joe poked his head through the door and said he needed help. He got the snowmobile stuck. So, let's go see what he needs. Uh -huh. What'd you get stuck? Stuck what? I'm just sitting back enjoying a nice ice cold water. <laughs> so, not enough snow or did you go too no. slow? It's too sharp of a turn right here, and I was running into these bushes because the front skis wouldn't grab. So I slowed down with this load on it. That was a mistake. And, well, you uh, got are all three of those totes full of water? The two back ones are full. The front one's half full. I didn't want to overload it, you know. So you're hauling water to your cabin? Yeah, I'm hauling all right. water to my cabin. We're kind of low. So we just need a little more horsepower. Got that two cycle exhaust, <coughs> pretty rich. <clears throat> right on, all right, well. That's how we do it out here in the bush. More day in the life stuff, right? Testing out this little bit of snow that we've got and pulling the sled. And then he'll hook up the hose, just like the way we do it in the winter. And then just pump it right into that hole there. There's always something to do here at the lodge. Always something. I am down here at the root cellar. And we are having a real problem this year with the warm and moist weather this October. Uh, with the moisture content in the cellar is terribly high and it's taking its toll on our produce. Let's go check out inside. I don't know if it'll be too dark. All right, so here's the inside of our root cellar. You guys have probably seen that a time or two before from previous episodes. And here is our huge produce ice chest. The peppers are rotting. Zucchini still seems to be okay, but the lettuce turned brown way too quickly. So as if the lack of produce isn't bad enough when we go without supplies for over a hundred days, but it is so moist in here as it's dripping off the top of the root cellar and stuff, it's just taking its toll on, on this stuff. It, and as you can see, we keep the lettuce wrapped in paper towels. We come in here, we change out the paper towels, we use that Arm & Hammer baking soda, whatever that stuff is. It doesn't seem to work. I, You know, the humidity in here is probably 99%. So anyways, it is what it is. At least all of this other stuff stays real nice for a super long time. As long as it's sealed, it'll last forever. Well, maybe not forever, but you know what I mean. All that to say that Alyssa asked for egg whites, so I had to run down to the root cellar anyways. Throughout the summer, we get plenty of cardio, hiking and kayaking around the property. But in the winter, 
we can get really lethargic and we need something to do to keep our bodies going. Also, our first year out here, I got the snowmobile stuck so many times and Joe had to help me every single time. I had no upper body strength. Then the next year, Joe and Bonnie moved to town to prepare for the pregnancy of their baby girl. And I spent that whole fall time into winter working out and building up my upper body. It came in really handy because I still was getting the machines stuck and I was able to always get them unstuck by myself. So I know the results helped. It gave me something to do during these short winter days and it also came in really handy. Woo. My wife is awesome and she cuts my hair so I don't have to fly into town and go to the barber. Um, this does not work in our house unless the generator's running or we plug it into this. This is a really cool thing for us using it off grid. Turn this on and powers the little hair trimmer. So, all right, we're gonna do a haircut time lapse. Enough chit chat. All right, let's do it. Come on, take brothers. <laughs>